All right, so welcome to our next relevancy module. This one is going to be about animals. So hopefully most people have an interest in animals, but what we're going to talk about during this module is how are we animals? How are we related to other animals? Humans are animals. I know we often like to think we're separate and different, but there's a lot of similarities between us and other animals. So what we're going to talk about in this module is our animal ancestor. What animals were here before humans, before lots of other animals, that gave rise to the diversity of the animals we see today? So we're going to do a little bit of evolutionary history here and kind of figure out what makes an animal an animal and where do we fit in this big picture? That's the idea, guys. Where do we fit in the picture of animals? We need to recognize we are part of the natural world. We're not separate from it. So when something happens to other species, whether it's plants, animals, etc., we have an impact. Now, I don't know if you can hear in the background. There's all sorts of noises. Birds singing insects making noises how do those connect together how do they connect to us that's what i want us to think about with this module about animal ancestors all right all right so to find the module go into the relevancy modules scroll down to the drop down arrow that says animal biology click on that it's going to open up a whole big list because there's a bunch of different modules in here and you need to scroll down the list until you hit the module that says our animal ancestors. That's where this information will be found. So make sure you guys get down there. The module animal, our animal ancestors, which is underneath animal biology within the relevancy modules. Okay, so hopefully everybody can navigate to it, run through the content, read it over, and then let's take a look at the lecture here. So, all right, so let's talk about our animal ancestor. We are animals, just like our cats, our dogs, those birds out there, those insects that are making all sorts of noise in the background, just like the jellyfish on the screen. We're all animals. So we want to figure out what is the relatedness between animals. What makes something an animal? How do we classify and organize animals and why do we care that's really the big question why is this important what's it mean to us so as we trace animal ancestry keep in mind or keep that idea in mind what does it mean to us and why is this important okay so oh let me clean this up get that we don't need that don't so animal ancestors why do we want to learn about this so if you look at those little pictures there, you have a person, human being, you have a chicken, little baby chick, you have a frog, you have a shark. We're all related. There's connection between all of these different animals. All of us have a common ancestor and that's what we want to explore. And what we want to learn about is the ancestor. That ancestor gave rise to all of these animals on the picture here. So there's this common origin to all animals. And then from there, we see populations change over time. This is the process of evolution. Let me increase the font here, make it a little bit easier for everybody to see, hopefully. All right, so evolution, change over time of a population. I got to stress that population. Individuals don't change. Populations do. They give rise to new species, new populations that are different enough from the others that we call them separate species. So when we look at animal evolution and the ancestral history, there was this 
original animal population that over time gave rise to all these other groups out there. That's the process, again, of evolution. Now, what causes a lot of this? This is what was discovered by Mr. Charles Darwin. What causes a lot of this change in the population over time? Oh, too big. Is the process of natural selection. Okay, so this hopefully sounds familiar. Natural selection. With natural selection, the most adaptable The most adaptable individuals survive and pass on their traits. Whichever individuals have traits that enable them to survive, those are more likely to reproduce because, well, they're alive. So then they pass on those genetics, and that makes their children typically more adaptable. And their children have traits and then their children pass those traits on to grandchildren. And what we'll see with this natural selection process is that the traits are always tweaking and adjusting and changing a little bit because the environment is always changing. So there's always this change over long periods of time in the populations that leads to evolution. Okay. So happens to animals, happens to plants, happens to every living population, species, etc. out there, they've all evolved over time, long, long periods of time. And what we're looking at today is the present day form. They will continue to evolve, continue to change, continue to adapt. Will we live to see it? Mm, depends on how many generations we can witness. You know, I can't watch elephants evolve because, well, they live a lot longer than us. Can I watch bacteria go through natural selection and evolve? Absolutely. Can I watch viruses do the same thing? Absolutely. That's why we get new variations on viruses all the time. They're going through this natural selection and evolution process. Weird enough, though, because technically viruses are not considered living. So, all right. Anyway. Let's take a look at how do we organize and classify animals. Now we say, all right, we got all these different animals out there. How do we classify them? Well, we use this thing called the Linnaean system of classification. And this is a fantastic system that has been changed and adjusted and modified and revamped and tweaked and the system itself has evolved to a certain extent over hundreds of years as we gained new information. Now the original Linnaean system was based on if you move you're an animal, if you don't move you're a plant, that's it. But as more knowledge has been gained we've watched the system get revamped, reorganized, and changed because of new information. Molecular data, wow, geez, that has changed a lot of things. In some cases, molecular has confirmed what we thought. Other cases, people went, didn't see that one coming, and it completely revamped the classification system. But what we do with classification is when we have an animal, we start at the top and say, all right, it has to go in this level of classification called domain. Now domain is big, broad, very generalized. Currently we recognize three domains of life. Domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. That's it. Don't be surprised if it changes. Now, here's the real simple way to know if you're in domain eukarya. Do you have a nucleus? 
That's that little ball that contains your DNA. Is it housed inside of a ball? If you have a nucleus, you go in that domain. All right. So animals are there. We all have a nucleus inside of our cell that contains our DNA. Cats, fish, frogs, those insects, crickets, cicadas, grasshoppers, the owls, etc. All of us have nuclei. But so do plants, so do fungi, so do the protistas. We all have nucleus, a nucleus. So what we then do is say, all right, let's sort things out. Let's move animals in a different direction than the plants, the fungi, and the protists. So this is where we go down to the new level called supergroups. Now supergroups is a goofy one because this is a fairly, in scientific world, a fairly new organization level. Last, I'd say maybe 10 years, supergroups have been really accepted. So animals go in the supergroup obstacants. Weird group, but this is where the animals would be placed under this particular supergroup. The next group underneath. Now that you know you're an animal, the next group underneath, or the next category, is the kingdom level. All right, we're an animal. Why do we go here? Well, we go in kingdom animalia because we eat what we call heterotroph. We're multicellular. Oops, sorry, I think I misspelled heterotroph. There we go. We're multicellular and we don't have a cell wall. That's kind of what makes us an animal. All right, not real specific. The jellyfish fits in this. The cicadas, the grasshoppers, the birds, the bees, the rabbits, etc. All the animals are going here because of these very general characteristics. It's more specific than just a nucleus, but it's still not that specific. So we want to get more specific. So what I want you guys to notice is the trend here. As we work our way down the classification, we are getting more and more specific. Each time you take a step down from domain to supergroup to kingdom to phylum to class to order to family to genus and ultimately to species, you are getting incredibly, incredibly specific. So to be all the way down here, you are very, very, oh, problem there. Sorry, very specific features. All right, you have to have this big long list of features to be called a Homo sapien. So what I want you guys to do is don't memorize obstacons, animals, chordata, mammalia, primates, etc. Remember the organizational pattern. Domain, supergroup, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That is what I want you to remember. And that it becomes more specific as we march our way down this list. Starting at domain, very broad, all the way down to species. Very, very specific features to call you a specific species. All right, so as we discover more animals, as we learn more about science, we try to organize the living things into a, a tree of relatedness, if we want to call it that. This is the proposed view of how life is related. So notice at the very bottom, we have a common ancestor that gave rise to all life on Earth today, like the trunk of a tree. From there, the bacteria evolved going down a certain path. Another ancestral group came up this way. Some of those individuals took a right turn and evolved towards Archaea. Others evolved and went this direction 
to become eukarya. Those are the three domains we talked about. Okay, so we'll pick more of this up in the next lecture. I said I like to keep these around 15 minutes.